Did you know that the divorce rate is almost twice as high for ADDers? In this video, I'll share with you seven, seven ADD relationship issues and what you can do about them. Hey there, it's Aaron on Hidden ADD, where you get the tools, insights, and science-backed strategies to live the life of your dreams if you have or might have hidden non-hyperactive ADD. If it's your first time here, consider joining the 1K Club of the channel's first 1,000 subscribers. Relationships aren't easy, but with ADD involved, they are that much harder. Melissa Orlov wrote an award-winning book called The ADHD Effect on Marriage. And in this video, I'll share with you seven of the most common relationship issues that she highlights, as well as her recommendations for what to do about them. Before we get into the issues, just a bit of good news. Orlov explains that the relationship issues with ADD follow consistent and predictable patterns. So by understanding the patterns and using ADD specific strategies, relationship success can be yours. Also, stick around to the end and I'll tell you how these common relationship issues showed up in my first failed marriage. So, issue number one, painful misinterpretations of ADD symptoms. Basically, when the untreated or undertreated ADD partner does the things that ADDers do, like lose focus in the middle of a conversation, not follow through on doing things, forget important things. The other partner uses a neurotypical interpretation, which is that the ADD partner just doesn't care, is lazy, is selfish. Until there's better awareness of ADHD and its related symptoms for both partners, this issue continues. Issue number two is what Orlov calls pursuing and escaping. Basically, the non-ADD partner nags constantly because otherwise they feel nothing will get done, and the ADD partner then retreats and escapes to avoid the constant nagging leaving both partners even more frustrated. I've definitely been guilty of this. Issue number three, the blame game. The neurotypical partner blames the ADD partner's unreliability. Get her so unreliable. While the ADD individual blames their partner's constant angry nagging. If you would just calm down, everything would be fine. Relationship issue number four, the chore wars. ADDers tend to be exceptionally bad at routine, boring, unpleasant tasks. As a result, the neurotypical non-ADD partner can end up with a ridiculously unbalanced distribution of the household chores. Over time, this can lead to significant resentment. Relationship issue number five, walking on eggshells. Due to the ADHD symptom of reduced impulse control, tantrums, spurts of anger, and rude behavior can come from the ADD partner. The result is that the non-ADD partner can feel like they're walking on eggshells, always wary and vigilant. Relationship issue number six, losing faith in the other person. You each thought you had found the perfect partner, but now the neurotypical partner feels like an angry, unhappy nag, and the ADD partner feels as if they're never good enough. That pretty much sums up my whole first marriage. A relationship issue number seven, Seven, can I find a class on finger counting? The sexual relationship breaks down. With the weight of all these other relationship issues taking hold, sex becomes strained or non-existent, according to Melissa Orlov. So here are the solutions that Melissa Orlov offers in the ADHD effect on marriage. Obviously, check out the book for a more comprehensive breakdown of these solutions. And if you have your own solutions or things that you've experienced, put them down in the comments below for the benefit of all the viewers. So for issue number one of painful misinterpretations of ADD symptoms, Orlov recommends really getting to understand 
ADD, so you know your differences and can start to respect those differences. For number two, the chore wars, Orlov says it's not as easy as just trying harder. ADD partners need to learn to try differently. ADD specific approaches are needed to get over the chore hurdle. For issue number three, the blame game, Orlov recommends that both partners take responsibility and make appropriate changes. For walking on eggshells, Orlov says getting at behavioral issues for both spouses is part of good treatment. She implores couples to not get stuck in a fixed mindset that says, that's just the way they are. For issue number five, pursuing and escaping, Orlov says couples do better when they set up specific systems for communicating their needs and negotiating solutions. She says you need to treat the underlying ADD symptoms and find other types of reminder systems that aren't nagging. For issues six and seven, thank goodness I didn't need to do the finger numbers. Losing faith in the other person and the sexual relationship breaking down. Orlov says once the other underlying issues are dealt with, couples can rebuild trust and intimacy. So how did these seven relationship issues show up in my failed first marriage? Well, as a newly married couple just out of college, the issue started showing up slowly but surely. First, my undiagnosed and untreated ADD that had me take an extra two years to finish Harvard, that's the six year plan, showed up in my first job, which I hated and only lasted at for six months. My wife was very supportive while I spent a little bit of time each day job searching and the rest of the time drinking beer and playing video games. I really liked my next job, but the chronic procrastination and organizational difficulties that accompany untreated ADD meant that I needed to stay late to catch up on my work and actually get it done. My loving wife asked, a very understandable neurotypical question. She said, I get my work done every day and I'm home by 5.30, why can't you? Unable to argue with her unassailable neurotypical logic, I began coming home every day by 5.30. Unfortunately, the pile of undone tasks at my job kept piling up and ultimately that job fizzled out. That's a nice way of saying it. My inability to hold down a career and be the kind of husband my wife expected, put the initial strains on our relationship. The chore wars at home weren't much better, escalating the blame game and my wife's resentment. She was a type A go-getter, and so from her neurotypical perspective, just started increasing how often she nagged me. With enough nagging, I would do stuff, but it led to what Orlov calls the pursuing and escaping. Over time, it ultimately just led to her losing faith in me, and to an extent, me losing faith in her. Without the ADD diagnosis and ADD specific treatment, we struggled for answers for how to explain my disappointing behavior. My wife rightly thought I married a Harvard grad. How can he be so ineffective? I guess he's just lazy, selfish, doesn't care about me. And frankly, in the absence of any better explanation, I started believing all those things about myself too, and that I was incompetent and a failure and would never be able to achieve anything. She sometimes had to walk on eggshells around me and the sexual relationship did break down, ultimately culminating in her cheating on me. But in retrospect, can you really blame her? So that's my over-personal share. I'm happy to report that I'm happily remarried and my new wife and I are doing things much differently. If you'd like me to make a video about some of the things that we do differently, let me know down in the comments below. And do you have any experience with these relationship issues or anything that you've tried that's worked? Let me know in the comments below as well as for the benefit of other viewers. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you in the next video.